hands of the blind, there's no one like you. None like you. Into the darkness you shine. Out of the ashes we rise, there's no one like you. to this service of worship here at St. Peter's. We're glad that you're here this morning. It's good to see so many of you here this morning for this service. I do have a couple of announcements I want to share. Um, our worship committee 
is going to be meeting on Tuesday night at 7 o'clock. If you're on the worship committee, please make sure that you're there. Uh, we have a Red Cross blood drive coming up on February the 24th from noon until 5.30. You can sign up for that online or you can call the church office. Um, Hope Mission is looking for two volunteer drivers. There's some information in the bulletin about that. If you have some time and you'd like to reach out to help them out, that would be great. And then also we are getting ready to do some spring cleaning in the middle of the winter. Is that a good time to do spring cleaning? Um, our attic, you guys know where the attic is here? How many of you know where the attic is? How many of you don't know where the attic is? Okay, it's probably good if you don't know where it is because then you won't put stuff up there. But we have lots of stuff in our attic that has gathered over the years. Um, and the men of the church are going to be building some shelves up there so that we can better store some of that stuff. But in order to build the shelves, we've got to get stuff out of the attic. And some of that stuff will go back in the attic. Some of it doesn't need to go back in the attic. So what we are asking is if you have anything stored in the attic of the church, we're asking you to come by, get the stuff down. We're going to store it in a classroom down in the fellowship building, the education building. There's some information in the bulletin about this. And we need that done by next Sunday. So we look forward to everybody's help with that. Um, so those are some things going on in the life of the church. And I think that Jackie had an announcement that she wanted to share this morning too. So guest artists will be Riley Clemens and Jordan St. Cyr. Well, the concert's going to be Friday, March 18th in the evening. Um, the information for the billing, well, I'd like to go. And I wanted to announce it to see if anybody else would like to go. If we can get a group from the church, if you're interested to hear Jeremy Camp sing. Um, I think he's fabulous. So I'm going to put this out on the table so you can take a look at the pricing and, and everything. Um, but reach out to me so maybe we can get a group from the church to go see the Jeremy Camp uh, performance up in New Bern. Thanks. All right. Thank you. All right. Now I invite everybody to stand and sing. Number 2031 is called We Bring the Sacrifice of Praise. Our praise song this morning, uh, you'll find it printed on an insert in your bulletin. It's called Our God. And um, you have heard this. Many of you have heard this on the radio. You've also heard it this morning as the um, ensemble sang this prior to the service. So let us now join together and worship God as we sing Our God.
Our God is greater, our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power, our God, our God. Into the darkness you shine, out of the ashes we rise, there's no one like you, none like you. Our God is greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other. Empower our God, our God. Our God is greater, our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God, our God. And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? What could stand against? You are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God, our God. Our God is greater, our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our stop us and if our God is with us then what could stand against and if our God is for us then who could ever stop us and if our God is with us then what could stand against what could stand against God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God, our God. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. It is good to be with God's people in God's house on this beautiful Lord's Day. Um, who has a joy or a celebration they'd like to share today? Some good news of what God is doing in your life? <clears throat> um, over the past year, I've been working at my studio. And last year, I did 60 bowls to donate towards the Empty Bowls program, which is a program that they run. Hope Mission is running it this year. Um, for hunger relief in Carteret County. It's an international program that happens all over the world for hunger relief. Um, this year, I foolishly, and not foolishly, in my heart, I knew I had to make 100 bowls this year for the donation, and it was such a joy. I had the um, women of the church came over and helped paint bowls last Monday, and it was just so wonderful to be able to be together and to doing some good work for God. It was, it was great to have them there. It was great to have my church family at, at the studio helping me out with this, this mission that's really, really important to me and on my heart. So, thank you.
Good morning. I just wanted to share where I saw God this week. I think when you really see him and you know he was in something and he let something happen that you have to share it. So um, we talk about this church being a prayer, a praying church. And I'm so thankful for the prayers of this church through the years and so many things and so many needs and how God has answered even when we don't pray for ourselves sometimes. We know our church family's praying and the strength that that gives is just amazing. And so um, not to go into the details of what happened, but at choir, prayer requests were taken at the end of, of choir practice and a name was lifted which prompted um, a visit to go see someone the next day and the visit was well received and there were healing prayer, healing tears. But just because a name, someone in this church family lifted a name of somebody to God for prayer and, it, and God took that little and moved and brought such good stuff out of it. And so I just had to tell it this morning. I'm thankful for that this week. Any others? All right. Well, as we, as we have heard through a celebration this morning, God does work through prayer requests. God does work when we pray for others. And, and uh, as Sonia said, this is a praying church. And so we're now going to enter into that time of prayer where we remember others and their needs. Uh, we are... Uh, we're family. And what family does is family loves one another and family prays for one another. But, you know, there's a lot of people outside of our family that need prayer too. Uh, last I checked, because I, I read the news every morning. I read my Bible first, but then I read the news. And um, the world's a pretty messed up place right now. There's a lot of people that are hurting, a lot of people who need prayer. So... At this time, I want to invite anyone who'd like to come and kneel at the prayer rail during this special time of prayer. I will lead the congregation in a prayer um, for others, an intercessory prayer, asking God to intercede in their lives, to make his presence known, to bring uh, blessings and hope to those who are without. And during that prayer, you will have an opportunity to voice the names of anyone you would like remembered today. Let us pray. Gracious Lord Jesus, holy are you and great is your name. Your majesty outshines the sun. Your blessings outnumber the stars. And your greatness stretches beyond the bounds of the universe. We are gathered here this day to bathe in the light of your presence, to be filled with the warmth of your spirit and to bow in wonder at your almighty power and love. We come before you bearing upon our hearts the burdens of so many others. Throughout this creation, there is great need. Superpowers are on the brink of war. The world still struggles in the shadow of a pandemic. The poor grow poorer. The hungry stay hungry. The lonely remain forgotten. Friends and loved ones are struggling against disease, addiction, fear, temptation, and doubt. You created us for lives of love and joy and so much of life has robbed people of those feelings. And so we pray now for them. We pray that you will move in their lives in a mighty way. That you will bring healing to their brokenness 
and fullness to their lives. Especially this day, we pray for these individuals that we now name before you. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity that you give us to pray for others. We thank you, Lord, for hearing these prayers. And we thank you in advance for answering these prayers. Because we know they are heard and we know that they will be answered. And so we offer these prayers to you this day in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray in this manner. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now, if you're able to stand, I invite you to do so for our hymn of praise. It's number 261 in the hymnals, Lord of the Dance. I danced in the morning when the world was begun. And I danced in the moon and the stars and the sun. And I came down from heaven and I danced on the earth. Please be seated. 
as we come together each week, we do come acknowledging that we desire to be in God's presence and our sin stands in the way. And so as part of our gathering each week, we have a prayer of confession where we can lift up our sins to God and ask for forgiveness. And so at this time, I invite you to join me as we pray together the prayer of confession printed in your bulletin. Gracious Lord, how often we have been blind to your presence in our lives. How often have we been deaf to your voice as you speak in our day-to-day comings and goings? How often have we missed you because you came not meeting our expectations? How often have we turned our back on you because you challenged our way of thinking or because what you offered was less attractive than the baubles of this world? We confess, Lord Jesus, that the answer to these questions is all too clear. How often? Too often. Forgive us, O merciful Savior, for our selfishness, our stubbornness, and our commitment to wrong expectations. Wash us clean of our sins and give us eyes to see, ears to hear, and hearts to recognize your presence among us so that we may truly live as children of the living God. Amen. Hear these words of assurance from the book of Colossians chapter 1. He has rescued us from the power of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved son in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Hear the good news. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. And now I invite you to stand where you are and turn and offer the peace of Christ to your neighbor. Please be seated. we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever sing. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. We live for you. Open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. Song we could ever sing. 
the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever bring, we live for you. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say, worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you, we live for you, holy, there is no one like you, there is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. I will build my life upon your morning, um, and this is really just to err on the side of caution. COVID has really started running rampant again. I'm not going to have the children come up this morning, uh, but I'm going to talk to you where you are, okay? And I'm glad to see all of you here this morning. Um, I brought something for you to see, and your, your, your parents will get a kick out of this. This is a wooden box, and it's a box that my grandfather made. And he made this to hold something that he used a lot. And it was called his label maker. Okay, and it was this thing we used to have that you, you turned the top and you put letters and you punched the, the handle on it. And it made little sticky labels that would spell out things. So like Lily, if you had something and you wanted your name on it, you would spell out Lily and punch the letters out, and then you'd peel off the back and stick it on, and it would have a label with your name. And it was called a Dymo label maker. How many people ever used one? Okay, well, this was my grandfather's Dymo label maker box, and he made a label to put on the end of it that said label maker. But the label is handwritten and put on with a piece of tape. I loved my granddad, but he didn't always make a lot of sense sometimes. But this box, I use this 
to hold something that's very special to me, okay? You see what's in here? Pencils and pens and all kinds of drawing stuff in here, okay? And I've even got a pencil sharpener in here. Now, why would these be important to me? Do you know? Why? So that I can draw, right? Because I like drawing. That's something I do a lot of, and I've always liked to draw. I've even got a pencil in here that I can tell you that I have had for over 40 years. Okay? And the reason I know that is because it's a particular pencil that I've accidentally took home from work one day at a place that I worked at a long time ago. And so I still have it. We won't say I stole it, but I have it. Um, but I like to draw. And when I draw, I've got to have the right tools. And so I have all these pencils and these pens. And somewhere in here I have an eraser because I sometimes make mistakes. But, see, I can't draw without the proper tools, right? And God wants us to go around and tell people about Jesus, right? And he wants us to be able to talk about how much God loves us. Does he give us the tools to do that? Sure he does. He gives us the Bible where we can learn about God's love. He gives us Sunday school teachers who can teach us about God. Those are tools that we can use. And he gives us our words that we use to when we speak to people. Is it better to use nice words to talk to people or mean words? Nice words, that's right. And that's what, those are the words that God wants us to use when we talk to people. Because then people will see us and they'll see love in us. And where does that love come from? It comes from God. That's one of the other tools that he gives us is his love. So even though my grandfather didn't have enough sense to make a real label to put on here, it's even got a piece of tape across it so it won't come off. But even though he didn't use his label maker for this, he wanted everybody to know what was in here. And he used the tools he had. He had a little ballpoint pen and he had a sticker and he had some tape. So he used his tools. I like to draw. I like to draw cartoons and tell people about God's love. I need the right tools to be able to do it. As you go through life and you share God's love with people, there's going to be different things that you'll need, different things that you'll use. But God will equip you and give you all that you need. Can we pray? Lord, we thank you so much for the beautiful children that are here today. And we thank you, Lord, for those people who have made following you an important part of their life, important enough that they bring these young ones to church so that they can become your followers. And Lord, as all of us work to follow you, give us the tools to help these young ones grow in their faith. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. As we now turn to hear God's word read aloud, I invite you to stand if you are able. This is the gospel. This is the word of God. It comes from Luke chapter 4, beginning with verse 21. Hear now the word of God. And he, that is Jesus, began to say to them, that is the people in the synagogue, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. And all spoke well of him and wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, Is not this Joseph's son? And he said to them, Doubtless you will quote to me this proverb, Physician, heal yourself. What we have heard you did at Capernaum, do here also in your own country. And he said, Truly I say to you, no prophet is acceptable in his own country. But in truth, I tell you, there were many widows in Israel in the days of Elijah, when the heaven was shut up three years and six months, 
when there came a great famine over all the land. And Elijah was sent to none of them, but only to Zarephath in the land of Sidon, to a woman who was a widow. And there were many lepers in Israel in the time of the prophet Elisha, and none of them was cleansed, but only Naaman the Syrian. When they heard this, all in the synagogue were filled with wrath. And they rose up and put him out of the city and led him to the brow of the hill on which their city was built, that they might throw him down headlong. But passing through the midst of them, he went away. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. And now let us respond to this hearing of God's word. Let us say what it is that we believe. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. seated and let us pray Lord as you have spoken to us through your word being read aloud this day I pray that you will continue to speak to your people through your servant give me your voice give me your words so that all I share here are your truths I pray this in Christ's name amen So, did you hear what happened? Jesus showed up at the synagogue in his hometown of Nazareth and basically announced that he was the Messiah, God's promised deliverer. And the people there heard him and they thought, isn't this Joseph's son? Isn't this the little boy that grew up in our neighborhood? Isn't he one of us? And now that he says he's the Messiah? Well, you know what? If he's one of us, then he's going to look out for us. You've seen how politics work. Can you say that? The politics works? But you've seen how, how politics works. You have a community that elects somebody to office. This person goes off to Congress or whatever, and the Congress is going to pass a new education budget package. And this representative attaches a line somewhere in the middle of it that says, and we're going to give all this money to this new park in our home community. And then the education package gets voted on and the people in this representative's community all of a sudden have $10 million to build a new park. You've seen how that works. They get a special favor. They say, because this person came from our neighborhood, they'll take care of us. And thus the people in that community have this sense of entitlement. 
since this person is from our neighborhood, we'll get a special privilege. That's how the people from Nazareth that were in the synagogue were looking at Jesus. Oh, he's one of us and he's the Messiah. That's great. That means he's going to take care of us for sure. And Jesus shuts down that discussion before it can even begin. He makes it clear. He will show no favoritism for the people of Nazareth. There was a biblical scholar named Matthew Henry who wrote a commentary back in the 18th century. And and when he wrote about this passage, he said it was if Jesus said this, because you know that I am the son of Joseph and your neighbor, You're going to expect that I'll work miracles among you as I have done in other places. Just like you would expect a physician, if he was able, to heal not only himself, but everybody in his family and all of his neighbors. In other words, Jesus is saying, I get where you're coming from, but it's not going to work that way. Let me show you some examples He says, remember Elijah? And of course the people in the synagogue are going to remember Elijah. And Jesus says, there were many widows in Israel when Elijah came, but he didn't help them. He was sent to a widow from Sidon. Jesus is telling them this Jewish prophet showed up and there was all this need among the Jewish people And the prophet ministered to a non-Jew while the Jewish widows were left in want. And then Jesus says, you remember Elisha? You remember how there were so many lepers lepers in Israel? But Elisha ministered to Naaman, who was a Syrian. And as a Syrian, not only was Naaman an outsider, that is, he was not Jewish, he was a Gentile, but he was also an enemy of Israel. And that's the one that Elisha helped. So Jesus is telling the people in the synagogue, these prophets ministered to outsiders rather than ministering to God's chosen people, Israel. That's what these prophets did. So if I'm the prophet who's near here now, why would you expect me to do differently? Well, earlier these people in the synagogue said, oh, these words coming from his mouth are so gracious. And now suddenly they're not so gracious. Even though Jesus is telling them stories that they've already heard. He's speaking the historical truth. And that truth is this. God showed favor to the Gentiles through Elijah and Elisha. And hearing this drives Jesus' listeners into a rage. They're not angry because he's claiming to be the Messiah. They're angry because Jesus has taken a swing at their sense of divine privilege. Oh, we're God's people. So you you have to take care of us first. And not only did Jesus take a swing at their sense of divine privilege, he used their scriptures to do so. This message he shared... It didn't fit their expectations. It didn't go along with their long-held understanding of who they were, how they identified themselves. Jesus said to them, You see me as a prophet sent by God, and you expect me to do wonders here among you? Well, didn't you hear what happened when God sent the prophets before? The deliverance that they offered was intended not only for Israel, but for all people. Those people from Nazareth that were in the synagogue, they had just heard Jesus say, today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. They heard him declare the fulfillment of God's blessings on them. But that's all they heard. Their idea was, he has come to save us and their minds couldn't see beyond that he's here for us 
And now Jesus is making it clear that this fulfillment of scripture is not limited to Israel alone, but to all the poor, all the captives. And he says, this isn't anything new, folks. Look at our history. Look at the history of God and Israel. God's grace was offered to all people back then. It's offered to all people now. Now, one way that you might understand this is to consider the spiritual life of Israel like a farmer with an apple cart. And each apple on the cart represents a blessing from God. And all of those apples are all lined up nice and neat on the cart. They're bright and shiny and they look wonderful. And they're there on the cart to be seen by other people. Maybe to be envied by other people. But the farmer is keeping all the apples for himself and his family. Oh, you like the way these apples look? Aren't they great? Look at all these blessings we got from God. Well, guess what? They're ours. You can't have them. There's hungry people in the streets, but the apples are off limits. Jesus shows up, knocks over the cart, and the apples all roll out where they're snatched up by the hungry people in the street. Does that make sense? See, this hostility towards Jesus that the people in the synagogue have, it, it has to do with how they read the scriptures. They see the ancient scriptures as a promise of this exclusive covenant between God and them. A release from their oppressors. And Jesus said, I'm not here to talk about national deliverance. I'm here to talk about liberation for all people who are oppressed, regardless of what labels they have. There's no ethic I'm sorry, there's no ethnic, no social, no historical boundaries that can contain or limit what God is about to do. That's what Jesus says. And their hostility towards him has to do, like I said, it has to do with how they see their history and also how they see themselves. The people in the synagogue that they have this tribalistic sense of community and this tribalism overpowers the joy they could experience of having the prophet in their midst Jesus has shown up and he said I'm the prophet you've been waiting for the day of jubilee has come it's here it's now and they go so you're the prophet huh well we don't care much for your message. It's not a message that we want. I look at this as a case of selective interpretation. They know the story of Elijah and Elisha. But they ignore the part of the story that they don't like. They overlook the uncomfortable details of the story. They are now realizing that their own history doesn't line up with their expectations. Their own history doesn't line up with their sense of privilege. The reality looks different than their ideals. Jesus' message was not what they expected at all. Jesus has really upset the apple cart. So I read this passage and I wonder, what expectations do we bring to our encounters with God? What ideals do we have about church that might blind us to what God is doing? Sometimes I think we're, we're so busy worrying about what we want that we can fail to hear the truth of God's word. If we spend too much time and too much energy 
trying to keep the apple cart the way we think it should be, we might fail to recognize that the world needs apples. We have the apples. We need to get the apples out to the world. Jesus came into this world not to keep the apples in neat and pretty little rows, but to scatter those apples so that all could taste God's grace. Are we willing to accept that truth? But yes, it's wonderful to have all these people in church. It's great. But there's all these people that aren't here, that don't know about Jesus, that don't know about God, that have never experienced the presence of God. That's what we need to be focused on. The mission of the church is to make disciples. That's it. Our mission is to make disciples, not to preserve our understanding of what we think the church should be, but to be open to hear what God says the church can be. And it might mean spilling some apples. It might mean coloring outside the lines. It might mean thinking differently. I don't know. But it will mean listening with an open heart. And sometimes it will mean being convicted when we hear God's word read. Well, I never realized it said that. That's what happened in the synagogue that day. It's easy to fall victim to thinking that God sees us differently because of our status as the church. It's easy to fall victim to thinking that God sees us differently because of our status as a Christian. It can become a sin of feeling privileged. As the church, we are set apart from the rest of the world. But we're not set apart from the rest of the world so that we can be blessed, so that we can receive blessings. We are set apart from the rest of the world so we can be a blessing to the rest of the world. We're set apart to be a blessing to those that have not yet been set apart so that they can be brought in and made part of this community where they can go and help make disciples and share the, the apples with the hungry to share God's blessings with those that don't know God. And it means breaking through boundaries. Did you hear what happened with Elijah and Elisha? They're two of the greatest prophets that the Jewish people ever knew. And God used them to minister to people outside the family did you hear what happened God broke through boundaries God upset the way things had always been when Jesus came he didn't come to do something new he came to open our eyes to what God is already doing what God has been doing all along and what God is going to continue to do I offer you these truths in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we grow in our faith, as we spend time in Scripture, you've heard me say many times that you can read a passage five, six times, and then the seventh time you read it, you see something new in there. That's because God is giving you better understanding. My understanding of Jesus at this point in my life is a whole lot different than it was 20 years ago. I hope it's different than it was a year ago. I hope it's different than it was yesterday. But we're gonna get that understanding where we know him better. It's gonna happen a little bit at a time and it all comes from the Lord. Let us stand as we sing our closing hymn, number 525. We'll understand it better by and by. We are tossed and driven on the restless sea of time. Somber skies and howling tempests oft succeed the 
bright sunshine in the land of perfect day when the mists have rolled away we will understand it better by and by by and by by and by when the morning comes when the saints of god are gathered home we'll tell the story how we've overcome for we'll understand it pray that you have sensed the presence of the Holy Spirit in our midst this morning. And we said um, last week in our message, we heard in the scripture that, you know, on the Sabbath, Jesus went to the synagogue as was his custom. So we know that when we gather in the sanctuary, Jesus is already here. And I pray that you sensed his presence here today. We want to thank you as well for your continued financial support of the ministries of the church. There are a lot of people in the world that don't know who Jesus is. And your gifts to this church help to build the kingdom so that word gets out to those who need to know the Lord. If you've not yet made your offering yet today, place the Lord's tithe or your offering in the collection box. Please do so on your way out. And now let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all that you have blessed us with, for filling our cart of apples to overflowing. Lord, help us to share all these blessings with others. We pray, Lord, that you'll take the gifts that we are giving this day, your tithes and our offerings, all that is already yours, and use it to further your kingdom in this world so that no one, will hunger spiritually ever again. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen.
go in peace, have courage, do no harm, do all the good you can, and stay in love with God. And may the love of God the Father, the grace of the Son Jesus Christ, and the power of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together, bind us together.